Well, hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'm offering you yet another tag. So a tag video was basically a video in which I create several categories within one section of product in particular, and I assign a product to each category. I already did such videos for my primers, my foundations, my concealers, and so today we are doing loose setting powders. Now this is going to be a bit quicker because I don't have that many setting powders, loose setting powders. I still have 13 or 14 if you count a double, so it's still more than enough. But compared to the other sections of makeup I've done so far, it's definitely less. And so I have made up 10 categories and there's actually a few repeats in there because, I mean, yeah, some powders come back in different categories, you'll see. Okay, number one is the oldest loose powder, and this is, I think, the Urban Decay Velvetizer. I bought this a while, a while ago. Um, I mean, I can't say for sure it's actually the oldest in my collection, but based on what I've seen, I'm pretty sure it is. This is a very, very light, soft powder. I haven't used it in forever. I know you can also mix it in with foundation to make it a bit more thick if that's what you're looking for. So definitely an old one that I should try again. Now on the other side of the spectrum, my most recent powder is the She Glam uh, Baked Glow Setting Powder in the shade Cappuccino. This is a good one, it will come back in a little bit. It's a good powder, honestly, for the price, really not bad. Speaking of price, I have now my most expensive powder, and this is the Veil by Hourglass. I believe this is a little bit over 50 euros, which is definitely up there. I think it's worth it because it is such a nice, finely milled powder. It is so beautiful, especially for those of you who have drier skin and usually don't want too much powder. This will work wonders. And you might have guessed it, the least expensive powder I have is, again, the She Glam. I believe it was 4 euros, 3.50, something like that. Keeping in mind that you can pretty much always have discounts and all of that on Shein. So again, for the price, a really good powder. Moving on to my most scented powder. You heard that right. Some people feel the need to put perfume in their powders and I couldn't really decide so let me show you two of them. The first one is the Huda Beauty. This is notoriously scented. A lot of people don't like it. I actually do like it. I like the smell of this. It's, I don't know, it's mysterious. It's the same uh, scent as uh, the foundation and it's a scent I actually do enjoy. Another one that's heavily fragranced is the Cody Airspun. Now this scent, I must say, mm, it's less my vibe. It's definitely, definitely very scented, very, I don't know, floral something. Not my favorite. This powder is still so amazing though, I don't mind. Let's move on to the powder with the most quantity inside, and it is without a doubt the RCMA, the original no color powder. There's 85 grams in here. It's huge. Like I, I'm going to need several lifetimes to go through this. And on the other side of things, the powder with the least quantity inside is this Baby Mark Jacobs. This is the finish line perfecting coconut setting powder and there is 2.86 grams. It's very very small so it's not going to be the most practical if you want to put a bunch in the lid and go in with a big sponge or whatever but it's quite practical if you want to travel with it. Moving on to a loose setting powder for which I have a backup. And again, it's going to be a repeat, and it's the Cody Airspun. I bought this when I went to New York a few years ago. This was at the time impossible to find in Belgium. It is now possible, I believe, on certain websites, but it's like $15 or 15 euros, whatever. In the US, when I bought it, it was like, I don't know, a couple of bucks. It was really, really nothing. So I figured, you know what? Who knows when I will be back? I'm just going to stock up. So... 
it makes no sense because there's so much powder in here and I have so many different powders that I mean I don't know if I will ever get to open this. The next category is the powder with the worst <laughs> packaging and again a repeat I'm gonna have to go with the RCMA. It, it doesn't fit in, in my drawers you know like it doesn't fit like the other powders do so it's quite annoying i must say though i hesitated a little bit with the hourglass because you have a stopper here which means that it's it's a bit harder to put the powder in the lid when you want to get a lot of it but i mean the powder is so nice i kind of overlook that um and i still make it work but this for organizational purposes it's annoying and let's finish off with a powder i have on today and it is the fenty beauty this is the pro filter instant retouch setting powder i have mine in the shade butter this is also a bit scented but it's softer than the other two i talked about and it's it's a nice smell it's a bit i don't know sugary it smells nice i do enjoy the scent of this the powder in itself, I feel like it's quite drying. I still like it. I still use it. I have used it today, but it's definitely pigmented. So when you use it, you, it's going to leave some traces. I had to go over my um, Dior no powder powder business. So this, as much as I love Fenty, I'm a bit on the fence about this one. I feel like depending on what day I wear it, what other makeup I wear with it, it's kind of hit or miss, you know? Sometimes it doesn't look so good and sometimes my skin agrees with it. But you know me and Fenty, it's a love story, so of course I'm still gonna use and enjoy this powder. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel because it's free, so why wouldn't you? And I will see you guys next time. Bye!